In spite of the tremendous progress that has been made in the fight against HIV, prevalence among women remains high. The UN's report has found that young women and adolescent girls are being left behind. We're seeing more progress today than ever in the fight against AIDS. But it's not over yet. In Sub-Saharan Africa, young women and girls are twice as likely to get HIV than men. In South Africa alone, this week, 2,000 young women and girls will get infected. That's not a coincidence. It's a byproduct of the many challenges these young women and girls face in their adolescent years. Young women like Nicolette. If I would go back to my younger years before I fall pregnant, if I knew what I know today, I wouldn't be infected with HIV and I would make better choices. It's a very hard in this community to make a living. People work on the farm, they don't have any education here. Most of the children are neglected, especially weekends, you will see them on the streets. I was 13 years old when I met my boyfriend and he was 18 years old. He put a lot of praise on to me to have sex with him, but I was scared. I didn't know, I wasn't informed, and I was very committed to him. I didn't know I was dating more than one girl at the time. And in 2007, I found out that I'm pregnant. Gender inequality is a major driver of HIV. I was working on the farm and I just had a stomach bug. I went to the clinic sister and she did the test and it was positive. I was afraid of dying. I never expected that I would be infected with HIV since I only sleep with one boyfriend and he refused to get tested or stop sleeping around. The first thing that ran to my mind was my child because I was breastfeeding him since birth. I want them to go to university and become whatever you really want to be. In some countries, girls who complete secondary school have 30 to 60% lower HIV rates than those who do not. We need to invest in women and girls and place a higher value on women's rights. I think I have more than enough support this thing back here. On a daily basis, they make sure you get your tablets, they make sure they have a proper meal. They will never discuss your disease with anyone. They will always ask you, what do you need? They will always want to help you. Meeting the health needs of women and girls is essential to end effective response to HIV. Advocating for the rights of them is paramount if we are to end the HIV epidemic. Now that I'm really informed by professionals, they really changed my way of thinking. How do we get HIV? You can still have a happy life. You can still strive to do better or fulfill your dream in the end of the day. <laughs> it was much easier for me to love with the reality that I'm actually positive in. My son is my first priority now. I need to stay strong for him. I want to help parents in my community and especially our young children who are infected with HIV and I want to change their mindset from negative to positive. I want them to look at me and say because of you I didn't give up. Ending the AIDS epidemic for good can only turn into reality if we end the disproportionate impact HIV is having on young women and girls. To do that, we need to recognize the important link between education and health. A girl who completes secondary school is less likely to get married early, get pregnant early, or to get HIV. And she's more likely to unlock a world full of possibility in an environment healthier for herself, her family, and in turn, her community. By investing in the health and empowerment of young women and girls, we can end the AIDS epidemic for good. <laughs>